In this lecture, we'll be studying about the whole thing problem. So in the previous lectures, we have studied about undecidability and we have also understood what is undecidability. And now we will be taking an example of undecidability, which is the halting problem. All right, so first let's see what is this halting problem. So the halting problem says, given a program, will it halt? So it is a question which asks that if we are given a particular program, then can you make sure that this program will halt or not? And what do we mean by halting? Halting means that the program will either accept and halt or reject and halt and it will never go into a loop. So that is what we mean by halting. So can you have an algorithm that will tell you that a given program will either halt or not? Now, if you put it in terms of Turing machine, this is how you can ask the question. Given a Turing machine, will it halt when run on some particular given input string? So if you have a Turing machine, and if you give some particular input string to this Turing machine, will it halt or not? Now, if you think of any particular problem, we can say that by looking at the Turing machine or by looking at the program and the particular input that you give to the program or the Turing machine, you can say that yes, this will halt or this will not halt by the nature of it. But in a generalized way, will we be able to design a Turing machine or an algorithm which will take any program and tell us whether that program will halt or not. So the answer to this is that no, we cannot design it. We cannot design a generalized algorithm into which if we pass a program and then the algorithm tells us that this program will either halt or not. It is only possible to run the program with a particular input and then just see for ourselves whether it will halt or not. We cannot design something generalized. Now let us look at a similar question like this. So here I can reframe this question in this way. Given some programs written in some language, let's say Java, C, etc., will it ever get into an infinite loop or will it always terminate? So if you have written some program in any language of your choice like Java or C, can you find out whether that program will go into an infinite loop or will it always terminate? So infinite loop means it will go into the looping state and terminate means it will halt. So can you design a program like this? So can you develop an algorithm which will find out whether a given program will ever get into an infinite loop or it will always terminate? Now, if you remember, in the very first lecture of this lecture series, I took this example when I was giving you the introduction to theory of computation. And I said that we cannot design a machine that will not allow the code to go into an infinite loop. Now, let's just take a glimpse of that lecture. So this was a lecture and I asked that, can we design a machine that accepts all valid Java codes and never goes into an infinite loop? So it is of course possible to design a machine that will accept all valid Java codes. But when we include another condition and that is the program should never go into an infinite loop, I said that it is not possible to design this kind of a machine. And there were many of you asking why this is not possible. So I got many comments in the comment section of that lecture where many of you ask questions like, why can't we design a machine that can't reject infinite loops? Or can you explain why it is not possible to develop a machine that does not allow infinite loop? And why can't we design something we which doesn't allow our code to go into infinite loops. And yeah, all these infinite loops questions were there, but I did not give you the answer to that question in that lecture. And that is because in order to understand this, we need to know about undecidability and we also need to know about how Turing machines work. So now as we have already covered the topic of Turing machines and now as we know about Turing machines and also now as we are studying about undecidability and we have the idea of undecidability, we are in a position to answer this question. We will now see why can't we design a machine that accepts all valid Java code and never goes into an infinite loop. This second portion is the important one. So let us go back to our halting problem. So, as I already told you, this is an undecidable problem. The halting problem is an undecidable problem because we cannot have an algorithm which will tell us whether a given program will always halt or not in a generalized way. So, the question that we had in the first lecture about designing a machine which will accept all valid Java codes and never go into an infinite loop is actually the 
halting problem. Now let us see some answers to these questions. So the answer is in general we can't always know. The best we can do is run the program and see whether it holds. For many programs we can see that it will always hold or sometimes loop. So in a generalized way we cannot know. We can look at some particular programs as it is shown here and we can look at the program and we can run the program and see that it is not going into an infinite loop or it is going into an infinite loop. So the only thing or the best thing that we can do is to run the program and see whether it holds or not. But this is not a conclusion. This is just a testing and we cannot come to a conclusion by this. So in general we cannot know this. For many programs we can see that it will always hold or sometimes loop but for programs in general the question is undecidable. So we see that this halting problem is undecidable. Now if it is undecidable that means there is no Turing machine that can be designed to solve this problem. We have already seen that in the topic of undecidability when we studied that topic. Now from the church Turing thesis we have already studied that anything that is computable or anything that has an algorithm can be designed using a Turing machine. Now if you think of that in the reverse way, we can say that if there is a Turing machine for a particular task, then that will have an algorithm or that is computable. So here we said that the halting problem is undecidable. So if it is undecidable means there is no Turing machine which can design this and if there is no Turing machine which can design this from the church Turing thesis we can say that this problem cannot have an algorithm that means we cannot design or develop an algorithm which will solve this problem and what was our problem our problem was if you are given a program in general can you find out that that program will always hold in every conditions that it has so this is an undecidable problem. Alright, so that was about the halting problem and in the next lecture we will try to see in more detail about the undecidability of the halting problem. So I hope this was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.